How are you? It's been forever. We have been a little busy. Um, there's been some exciting things going on with Homeopathy United, but we wanted to get back today and connect with everyone and share another live broadcast about some remedies that are good for lumps and bumps. And um, please allow me to introduce my partner, Dr. Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi, Rebecca. Um, yes. You're so far away again. <laughs> am I? Ah, yes, I am. You are. Yeah. Alex um, was here for a little while. She uh, came over to the U.S. and spent nine or 10 days with us. And we went to a seminar and we had a great time together. It was really hard to send her home. So that's why we were busy. October was um, a little crazy. And uh, and now we're back. So we hope everybody's doing well. But I'm coming again. And you know Yay. that. <laughs> <laughs> and we can talk about more remedies. Yeah. So today we were tossing around different ideas. And we've had, of course, it's usually cases that encourage us or inspire us, I should say. And yeah. uh, we've had a couple of cases recently that we wanted to share with you and talk about some remedies. So lumps and bumps, which I think okay. everybody, every animal, every creature gets in some fashion or another, right? Absolutely. And we have quite a few cases in our group um, of the animals. But we had as well a few cases in the skin, which relates. And yeah, I think it's a good um, a good thing for uh, this week after such a long absence. Excellent. Well, if I can actually get these documents up, I'm going to stop sharing for a second because it turns out that I didn't grab what I was hoping to. Story of my life. Here we go. Okay. I found it. Excellent. Let's try that again. Lumps and bumps. We're a little out of practice, just so you know. I think we've had a few lumps and bumps. <laughs> it's the holiday. Yeah, well, it's getting close. So, boils, carbuncles, abscesses. Oh, boy. <laughs> I know. And this is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. There is much more to it. Um, but we're going to start from here. And there were quite a few cases of bumps in. Um, Lately. Animals recently. and people. Yeah. Recently. So this is just a quick because it can be very confusing. There are so many names that relate to more or less the same thing. So the broad name is abscesses. And abscesses, basically, it means uh, a collection of pus anywhere in the body. Uh, and that resu results from an inflammation. Uh, the boils is a collection of pus but usually from a, a, a hair follicle. And these are the most commonly seen. Usually there is an infection of a bacteria and most commonly Staphylococcus and Staphylococcus aureus being one of the top ones. But um, a carbuncle, is basically a crop of boils. And a crop means many boil formations in the same area. So a carbuncle, it's a cluster of boils. And the picture, I'm sorry, the, the thing is small, the, the frame is small, but mm -hmm. you can see that there are more than one head. Oh, thank you. Perfect. And this was actually taken from the neck of, uh, of a patient. Um, 
And so you can see there what the carbon fuel is. Um, and therefore it goes from more than one follicle. A boil is usually one follicle infected that gathers pus and creates a boil. And an abscess is a collection of pus, but it can be anywhere in the body, not necessarily from a follicle. And most commonly we see it, uh, I mean, here is an example, very common example, which is in the gums um, mm. from a tooth infection. Yeah. I mean, most of the people are familiar with, you know, a tooth abscess. Yes. So the so, first remedy that we were going to talk about today was Arnica, which is, it seems like we, we cover this remedy a lot, but it does so many things. It, it just continues to amaze me uh, when somebody says, you know, oh, I don't have the right remedy. You'd be amazed at what the right remedy is. And most everybody has Arnica in their kit or in their case or, you know, some someplace where they can access it or they can buy it at the store, thank goodness. So boils yeah. are pimples, painful to touch, surrounded by an inflamed red border. Is it... Uh, so when it can be a boil from a follicle. Okay. It can be uh, almost a boil uh, from acne because mm -hmm. there are severe cases of acne where you have the pimple. Um, ah, one thing that is I forgot to mention, and it's quite important actually. So the differentiation between a pimple and a boil is that a boil is a collection of pus that has not come to a head. Ah. While a pimple, as you see in acne, it mm -hmm. starts, if you have severe acne, you can have, it starts as a boil. So it comes a lump on the cheek or wherever it is the acne. And then eventually comes to a head. And then that is called pimple. But if you don't see a head, it's called boil. A so boil. In, in acne, that is quite painful to the touch. And, and this is important, is a detail that might seem a small detail, but it's very important. So arnica, acne, or boils, because again, um, and we just launched our newsletter that <laughs> there did. are no specific remedies for specific conditions. And here is a prime example. Mm -hmm. Arnica covers boils, covers pimples, ca covers carbuncles and covers um, uh, abscesses and mm -hmm. can cover... Um, a million thousand mm -hmm. other symptoms. Right, other trauma you know, to, to other, the body. It can, be, it can be a bump from a blunt uh, trauma. Mm -hmm. So from an impact, that is a lump as well, which Arnica is one of the top remedies. And actually that's how people know Arnica is from impact trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it can cover, you know, shock so it can cover emotional distress as well it's a great place to start absolutely a great place to start and therefore so there are no specific remedies for specific conditions, conditions but in the frame of lumps and bumps that we are talking today the bump is very very sore to the touch and if you think about it if you get a massive impact from something um usually it, it, it hurts when you touch it it doesn't hurt if you don't touch it i right. mean if you bang your head and you have a massive bump on your forehead it will not be painful all the time it will 
the the moment of the impact and sure. shortly afterwards and then you have you develop a massive egg on your forehead but as long as you don't mess Touch with it, it it's really, okay yeah it's okay yeah and and that's so arnica and that is the same you know for the, the severe acne or boils or mm -hmm. carbuncles so it's painful to the touch this is what you have to remember and the right. pain will have to be like from a blunt trauma so it's a sore bruised pain mm -hmm. they can come most often on the scalp but it can be in other, other parts of, of the body but the scalp is primarily the Where location you're see it. okay yeah um i think about animals they can that... come in crops as well, yeah. you know, like, and I, I think about animals that, that get boils and sometimes it can be from a bite. Sometimes it can be from a hair follicle. Sometimes it's because they're in a stall and they're rubbing up against a certain area constantly and irritating the skin where it is a trauma, but it happens frequently. Um, whether they're coming in and out of the barn or, you know, going to eat something and they're smacking their head, their, um, their body somewhere. And sometimes it will create boils for them. So Arnica is a good place to start. So the yeah. next remedy is arsenicum. I love the picture that you chose. <laughs> um, these usually are large boils. They can come in crops as well. But the main thing to remember about arsenicum is that there is a burning pain. And this pain is ameliorated by um, warm applications. So I have a patient that unfortunately usually used to develop severe boils on the genital area and the pain was excruciating but mainly it was a burning pain and the only way that she would find relief it was to dunk herself in a very hot bath bath that, so it was hot bath yeah yeah and that would really, you know, help her out. Of course, you know, it's a temporary relief, but sure. it's a very important indication for the remedy. And this, uh, I mean, this poor lady and this, and and the the boil would start, you know, small around the vaginal area and then it would develop and get bigger and bigger and bigger and she had to go to hospital mm. have it lancated and then be on a course of antibiotics and of course it was a question of time a few months and another one would come up and the same procedure and it, it yeah, just was repetitive the and until when and Until I imagine that you saw a great deal of restlessness in her. I know that that's very common with arsenicum is they're, they can't sit still because the pain is so intense and something like a boil or a carbuncle or what have you can get infected quickly, depending on the environment, you know, where it is on the body, on the animal or the person. And uh, it can actually turn into an ulcer. It can, uh, you can see the gangrene or, you know, something really severe. And it seems like it can happen quickly. Um, although there may have been an underlying cause that you weren't aware of, you know, with your animal um, or even yourself sometimes if you have a boil and you think, you know, you're in the shower, you might notice it it's not a big deal. And then all of a sudden one day it's very angry and uh, there's a lot of burning pain and, but it feels better to be in the shower than you might think about arsenicum with animals. I'm not sure how they would get relief in that respect. Do you have any thoughts? 
Alex, like if an animal had a large boil, how would they find some relief? Well, with the animals, unless it is summer and you see them basking in the sun, because that's, you know, again, it's warm. Only option, that, yeah. uh, that makes them feel better. Um, you go by the totality of the symptoms. You yeah. never prescribe on a boil unless, right. you know, you have a lot of symptoms to justify the, the remedy. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of homeopathy is that once you get the right remedy, it's miraculous because this lady I was talking about, guess what? She got a boil uh, when finally she decided to try homeopathy. Mm -hmm. And in less than, it was less than three weeks, she had, um, how do you say, it's not, you don't subscribe, but she had organized and planned a trip by foot to Santiago de Compostela. So she had to walk for kilometers. And of course, with the massive boil that in was the not place gonna happen. where yeah. it was, yeah. it was not going to happen uh, if she had to go to hospital and have it lancated and then be on antibiotics, for sure, you know, mm. and, and usually they, they, they put a, a drain because you cannot stitch boils. Right. Anyway, it was a mess. And and in 12 days, she did Santiago de Compostela. She took her bottle with a remedy, but yeah, everything was fine. And she hasn't had another one since, I don't know, almost two years now. That's fantastic. And I'm sure she doesn't miss them at all. <laughs> no, no. So the, the next remedy we were going to talk about today was another very common remedy that you've heard us reference many, many times, and that's belladonna. Um, every time I think of belladonna, I think of bright red and either just angry or, you know, just so uh, prevalent, so prominent, like there's no questioning when you have a belladonna case because of the red, the hot, the throbbing. Um, when you say blood boils and especially having boils return every spring, we call that periodicity. And mm. it's a it's a good indication with belladonna. If you're seeing that periodicity every spring where the boils are returning, especially if they're in the same spot and they're absolutely red and hot and throbbing, then think of belladonna. Um, the interesting part about belladonna is it can alternate redness and paleness of the skin, but there's still that hot throbbing and there's an intensity to it and it tends to come on quickly. True. But the funny thing is that with animals, it, you, you know, with people, a belladonna boil or carbigo or abscess, you know, it, it's pretty clear. And the person can tell you as well, you know, the pain is, sure. is, is pulsating or pounding and you can get that and you can see it because it's on the skin. Now, in an animal, it's very difficult. I, and we're going to see a case later of a black Labrador and where the skin is black, the hairs are black, and you don't see the, the redness and you don't see the throbbing uh, because the dog cannot tell you or uh, explain what type of sensation he is having. He's just licking it because it hurts mm. that's what animals do when it hurts they leak so again uh, i cannot stop stressing it it is a question of taking the case and this was uh, a patient of mine so i knew his constitutional 
I knew it came suddenly. And so I went for the complementary remedy of his constitutional remedy and it worked yeah. like a charm. But on people, yes. I mean, it's it, it's easy to spot because it's so characteristic. So belladonna comes suddenly, redness of the of the eruption and the pain is 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 throbbing pounding intense burning and you put your hand on it that with animals you can do as well mm -hmm. which is one of the first questions that we do ask you know when you put your hand on the on the lamp how does it feel and usually I say grab both legs the one that has and the one that doesn't is there a difference in temperature because the animal cannot tell you always oh, hot but by by touching um you can understand the difference yeah beautiful remedy so the next not remedy only for fevers yeah. <laughs> not only for fevers exactly <laughs> and sunburns um hepar self this is a very interesting remedy and I remember looking at like comparing this with silica, which we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. um, even back in school where it was like, what's going to, sometimes these remedies will allow your body to reabsorb or absorb what has started to become inflamed. And Hepsulf is one of those remedies, um, but it can be incredibly painful. And the abscess and boil uh, interestingly enough, the patient feels chilly. And again, this is kind of the opposite of what you would see in Belladonna. Um, the boiler abscess or frenunculus uh, are extremely sensitive to touch. Um, Hepsulf has kind of this explosive nature, if I remember right um with just how they react and respond so True. when you're treating an animal if you find an abscess on them and they react uh kind of aggressively or mean or you know something that's out of the norm for them uh where they they are quick to bite or snap or kick at you or what have you um, Hepsulf is definitely something that you want to consider. Uh, and you can usually tell when they're really hurting. But how do you know if an animal feels really chilly? Okay, so how do you differentiate this remedy from other remedies? Because they all have a certain degree of pain, you right. know, more or less. Hepsulf is one of the most intensive pains so the moment you touch it even slightly there will be a reaction mm -hmm. and not a good reaction with a person you will see that the patient is extremely irritable and it doesn't want to be approached or touched or anything and if you try to interfere with the patient you will be you will get a nasty response the same thing with an animal but the interesting thing is that with Episulfur, the pains are the stitching type. So the slightest touch, it's like you are electrocuted or it's like you have wow. a nail being pierced through the affected part. And therefore okay. the reaction will be, you know, <laughs> action and the reaction, so the reaction will be as equal as, you know, trying to get the away force. From, yeah. from the force. And of course, uh, they, they are chilly when they are in an upper uh, state. Therefore, you will see them, you know, with a dog going close to the radiator um, or being in the sun or being tucked in their bed. And if there is blankets, they will go under the blanket um that's how you will see fantastic thank you so the next remedy is moristica this is a remedy i'd never heard of until alex and i started working together and 
uh, I still have yet to use it in a case and I continue to use, learn more and more about it. Um, so is it the nut that we're seeing kind of hanging yeah. in the back on the picture? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your experiences with this. Okay. So for, I, I, I love this remedy, amazing results with this remedy. So basically this is the, um, the human scalpel. This is the surgeon mm. of homeopathy. It's anything that you look and it, it's not draining and you think, ah, this needs a scalpel to, you know, let it drain. And you use silica and nothing happens or the results or the results continue being extremely slow with, with silica. This is the remedy that you go to. So this is the human scalpel. Anything that you want to drain, uh, either it is on a head or even if it does not have a head, but it's a massive abscess and you need to drain it, you go to Miristica. It has antiseptic powers and it works on almost any type of separation. It shortens the duration and it acts even in panaritiums, which is uh, a collection of pus when you have an infection around the nails which are very painful and all the the finger gets red and you know again it's one of another bump mm. <laughs> that it's very annoying and it's quite common either because people bite the skins and it got infected either because the nails were not cut properly or because the nails have a certain deficiency in, and uh, they start brittling or cracking and then an infection comes up. Um, yeah, beautiful. I mean, Miristica for uh, panaritiums, it's amazing. It's also called Whitlow. Um, it's, it's almost specific, but any other kind of lump that you need to drain. Um, and we have a case later on. It's it's fantastic. It's very, very good. Thank you. So the final remedy is silica, which is one of my favorites. And I've had a lot of experience using this. Um, slow, incomplete processes. You know, you would think a lot of times people will hot pack a boil or, a, you know, a pimple or uh, some kind of abscess. You know, they'll they'll really try and speed things along. I remember as a kid, people would say, you know, take a, a tea bag, a hot tea bag and put it on there and it will draw it out. And there, there are a lot of different home remedies that help with these type of issues with the lumps and the boils and the abscesses and such. Any inflammation that you feel like needs to come to a head um silica moves it along and it's really remarkable to watch my most recent case was my son and uh he grows a beard for a period of time you saw I think you saw him with his beard when you were here and he'll let it get so long and you know but he has a tendency to kind of like pull out and pick at the hairs and uh, he called me up and said, you know, I've got this sore spot and I think I have an ingrown hair. And I said, well, send me some pictures and, you know, started asking questions and so on. And uh, I was like, you know, that that's an infection and whatever is in there has got to come out. And uh, he was pretty far away and didn't have didn't happen to have any high potencies. And um, so I got in the car and drove three hours and brought him silica. And only a man can do that. Only a man would do that. <laughs> Dad would be like, do that. go to quick care, you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I did. I drove up and I brought him some silica. And two days later, I got a phone call. And he was like, you would not believe what is coming out of my face right now? And I said, 
take another dose, keep it going. <laughs> like, don't <laughs> let it stop. And it it was amazing, first of all, how quickly it got uh inflamed and intense, and uh that it was very clear that it was festering. And he had said, Oh, you know, this has happened before. And I was like, yeah, but never, never to this extent. Um, and I think it was within two, two days was when it started to drain probably by day five, it was all over. And, you know, with various other things that we do to support healing, uh, he was, kind of adamant about actually going through those steps because it was not a fun experience for him. Um, I've definitely seen this work with animals in the most fascinating way. Bumblefoot is one of them for birds uh, where they get, you know, a thorn or something stuck in their foot and, uh, and it becomes kind of this black, dark spot uh, it gets very, very inflamed and it's almost like they're walking around on a marble, you know, or something rather large. And you can tell that they're hurting. They can't perch. Um, they're not eating normally, et cetera, and so on. And um, I've had great luck with silica. And I've also even put it in there. Uh, I, whenever I find bumblefoot with my birds, I soak them, their feet in Epsom salt and warm water. And I put silica in the water before too. And that really helps. So where have you used this with farm animals, Alex, where you have seen a shift? Um, well, uh, silica is amazing uh, after hepasulfur. So because both have pains uh, and both have stitching pains. Therefore, you know, you start with episulfur and sometimes episulfur, as you say, as you said before, it, it just resumes the case and the, the inflammation goes away. And even if there is some pus formation gets reabsorbed from the body, if episulfur is given soon enough, mm -hmm. if not, Hepper sulfur will move the case, but then you get on an impasse, you know, it, it just doesn't progress. Uh, and then silica, because it's complementary to hepper sulfur and follows it extremely well, we go with silica. Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, in case of boils. And of course, if you suspect um that there was a splinter because the animal rubbed on a piece of wood or stepped on a thorn or mm. what have you like in the case of your chicken with a bumble foot uh, then if there is a suspicion of a foreign body you go to silica because this is the remedy that has the capacity to throw foreign objects mm out of the body out of tissue and, and on that note you want to note, be careful exactly yeah exactly if anyone you, with implants yes yeah exactly and and animals can have that too um so definitely something to uh keep in mind and that's kind of where we lean my experience has been if if there's a foreign body that we want to expel we don't want to use silica the remedy uh, then we will often go with silica, the cell salt, just to kind of support the body. And there are some herbs that are very high in silica that uh, are effective in that respect, but not quite as aggressive as uh, silica, the homeopathic remedy can be when it comes to expelling things that you don't necessarily want expelled out of your body. Even if it's not ex expelling, I have I move a patient that had severe cough where I prescribed silica and I gave clear instructions. Once the cough starts improving, you stop the remedy. Guess what? Because the cough was improving, the more you take, the better it is because people are ingrained with allopathic yeah that mindset yeah. 
And so there was an improvement, but the cough was not gone. And therefore, I even had said, take it every three to four hours uh, until improvement and then stop. So because there was an improvement, the patient put an alarm clock throughout the night to continue taking it every three to four hours, no matter what. Oh, dear. So what happened was he came to me in a complete state because not only the cough aggravated, but every single scar in their body, <gasps> including the belly button, oh. started superating. And that is very typical with silica, actually, you know, because it's one of the keynotes is that it, it has festering scars. So the scars and, of course, the belly button is a scar. Yeah. So every scar started opening and separating with the belly button. And the queen said that the stench that was coming from oh, that. I can't even imagine. And yeah. I said, well, just stop the silica. And the remedy. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And then we, all, we always have a laugh because when he comes to me and says, oh, you know, so-and-so does not believe in homeopathy or, you know, or, or septics or things that come on the news. He just says to me, give them silica and say that they can do and you will see what's happening. <laughs> just give them silica every two, three hours during the night. They'll do they're... it. They'll yeah. believe. They'll believe how powerful yeah. it is. Oh, that's fantastic. So we had touched on, you had touched on these cases, and I'm really excited to hear about all of these different ones. I know Lori had reached out on the Farm Animal page a week or so ago, and uh, I encouraged her to get in touch with you. So I was really happy that she followed up. She worked with you a year ago for the same dog, right? For Cooper? Mm -hmm. so, so tell us about this time. Yeah, well, this was a dog that I think uh, came to me because it was a year ago. <laughs> After, I think she said know. something about ears. There were some issues with the ears. Yeah, uh, a lot of water has gone under the bridge. But I think uh, she consulted me for Cooper for recurrent ear infections. Mm -hmm. Um and his constitutional was calc carb and the ear infections resolved. And I I I I said to keep calc carb um for three, four doses once a week and then stop. But because the results were so good, it carried on for a year. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, um the dog didn't have any issues until now. And this came very suddenly. And mm. it was a case of interdigital cysts. Uh, it's a black Labrador. And um, they came very quickly, very suddenly. Of course, we couldn't see the redness. Although if we would go to the first picture and we could enlarge it. There was quite a lot of redness, and it wasn't from leaking. Yeah, there. Is it this one? Yeah. This was one one paw, and the other paw, which is on the other side. I don't know how easy that is. Yeah, we had a crop of them there. Mm. And it was very painful, and the dog was limping. It came on the two front paws, which with belladonna usually is the case and so the dog was licking licking the the boils all the time and was limping and it was really in distress and she came for a consultation uh, it was hot it was quite hot mm. So she touched the front paws and the back paws at the same time, and there was a big difference in temperature. And belladonna is the complementary of calc carb. And well, the there statement is that yeah. she's very happy. And, and the it was quick. He responded fast. 
but belladonna is a fast acting remedy it that's is. another thing with silica you might not see results immediately and you will have because silica has in uh, its keynotes and in, in provings that mm -hmm. it's uh, boiled slowly uh, you know they are slow slow to resolve mm -hmm. so the process is very slow uh with belladonna they come quickly and therefore you know they resolve quite quickly in comparison yeah. to silica yeah. but the results nice were glory. so good that the main thing and the important thing <laughs> is that the husband is <laughs> that now a believer yeah is now a believer Although the dog was full of ear infections and was treated, on he didn't believe because it's again a slow, gradual process. Yeah. But yeah. with Belladonna, it was a, an Arnica experience almost. But to see the shift and see your animal respond uh, quickly and favorably, it's, you know, there's just no greater gift because they can't talk. They can't tell you what's going on. And sometimes we miss things that pop up for them until it hits a, a situation where they're suffering. And that's when we start to notice. So yeah. of course we want to do everything we can to make our babies better. So can you put the, the middle picture that yeah, his face. Very, and I know this is on the page too. He's just such a happy boy. He's so sweet. I know. So, yeah. yeah. Even if the boils were continue to be very big, you know, if the dog is like this, after the remedy, you know you are on the right track. Yes, it's a very good sign. Uh, I had we had somebody recently with a, a, a one of our clients that we worked with for quite, quite some time. Um, we'd started the cat on a new remedy, and she was like, "The cat is still sleeping. She never sleeps this long." And she's like, "Should I wake her up?" I'm like, "No, no, no. <laughs> no please don't wake her up. That's never a good thing. Sleep if your animal, if you give your animal a remedy." and they fall asleep, don't wake them up. Even if it's time for another remedy, don't wake them up because it's working and their body is allowing it to happen. And they're in a good uh, healing place because sleep is so healing. So it's, it's wonderful to witness that when it happens. So here's your case about Maristica. And you sent me these pictures the other day and I was like, what is this? Um, Tell us about this puppy and, oh my gosh, look at the growth under its left eye. It's just huge. Was it only on the left? Yeah. So it okay. was only this one. It's actually an old dog. Um, he was about 16. Um, so it developed this lump that came slowly and initially it was thought that it was a tooth abscess, but he was gowning on bones. He had no pain whatsoever. The gums were perfect. Uh, the bones were huge because he was fed on raw. Um, he didn't have any problem. It wasn't tender to the touch, uh, but still you know very very weird definitely a gland and big yeah and a big uh, i don't think it was any salivary gland um but a gland underneath the eye that got very swollen mm. there was no head initially it just grew and grew gave epa sulfur did nothing um and then I went with Miristica. Because mm. you knew it needed to come out. Because there, there, there was no, I mean, if you go to the big one above before this one, you know. Yeah, there's there just no evidence. No head whatsoever. And there was no evidence of any bite or anything. Entrance or exit or what have you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and there was not even tearing. So it was not any lacrimal duct as well, you know, being. Right. His his eye wasn't slammed shut, which is what's really surprised me when I saw this picture. And I was like, what in the world happened? Um, we don't always get those answers, though. We don't know why some of these things occur. But this 
is during the process, isn't it? Yeah. Of the, of the draining. So this is when we started with Miristika and it opened in different parts Mm -hmm. and it was not even, you know, like a hole from a head, but it started draining pus and blood and it drained and drained and then it just resolved. I'm telling you, it's the human scalp and look at that. Yeah, that the is scalpel. Almost, uh, uh, it is. Like, it, it is like um, somebody went in and aspirated it. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. that's remarkable. But the good part is, is the body did it. And this is what I love about homeopathy. The body did it on its terms. You yeah. know, and no that's antibiotics. Right. Nothing. Right. No force. No, no, uh, no forcible action in order to resolve something, because this is one of the things that you and I have talked about. And I was talking about somebody with somebody the other day about this, that um, when we forcibly do something to the body, to the being, it doesn't mean that it's not going to come back. There's something within the body that is generating this issue. It, could be a number of things could have been a trauma physical or emotional it could have been um you know grief which is a huge emotional trauma uh there are so many different things that occur but our body responds because that's what needs to come out that's what needs to be addressed and going to the totality, which is one of the things that we talked about in the newsletter, which I, I shared with everybody last night on the group, um, we don't just say, oh, it's this, therefore they need that. And it's wonderful to have you know, a, a kit of remedies because like you said, Hepsolf didn't do anything for this, but it took Maristica to bring it out and to allow it to resolve and i think that's that's the important word here it's not about force it's about resolution and that's what i love about homeopathy and that's what i love to see especially when we're working with animals is to see that resolution occur for them and then it doesn't come back which is beautiful no it didn't uh i think in this case because the dog was so old there was definitely toxins being built up and mm. the body has a wisdom and you know and he has to bring them out and if it cannot bring them out through the normal outlets yes. um it just you know creates these lumps um yeah and yeah. no surgery no nothing and yeah. it got resolved very nicely that's great so the next case is clearly human yeah. and um we've both had uh, a few of these cases lately. So talk about. Uh, I took their name out, by the way. So it says A. Ah, it good. Has yeah. I, yeah, I was going to do that, but of course I forgot. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So how old was this young man? And this boy is um, twelve. Okay. And so uh, the mom came to me and she says, oh, we have a situation again, because actually this boy was born at home with an homeopath, me. <laughs> so oh, he has this is the boy. Okay. You've told me that story. It's fantastic. Yeah. Him, his sister, and I have a few other patients that mm. they had home births with homeopathy only so anyway so i know him well so that's why the mom came to me and says oh we have another situation again this time is a tooth abscess and they want they 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 took the boy to a non-conventional dentist but even him said that he has to go for antibiotics and hepa sulfur Mm -hmm. and this was two days two days later and she said, "Fantastic! Was going to uh, was going to send you a photo, which is missing there. Uh, okay. The swelling nearly gone. P- 
pain also miracle <laughs> and this is a woman yeah. that is using homeopathy you know for many many years yeah she, she's with me for many years but he, even I mean the truth is that even me after you know two decades almost uh, and it's my work so it's several cases sometimes mm -hmm. a day there are some cases that it's still we go wow you yeah. know <laughs> yeah. this works in such a fabulous way yes it does when you get the right remedy it, it's really short of a miracle i mean yeah. homeopathy is something else when i did my final presentation which i think i shared for you uh with you for uh i recently graduated with my first year of from my herbalism uh apprenticeship and they said you can do a presentation on anything you want and i said i want to do my presentation on herbs and homeopathy not herbs versus homeopathy but how they work together and the case that i showed was uh a young man i want to say he's in his late 20s and um, you and I had talked about this. He had a wisdom tooth that was coming in and he got, a, you know, at 25 years old, his wisdom teeth are finally cutting and he got a horrible abscess and uh, the pain was excruciating. And um, the first time it happened, I gave him a remedy and it was really based on the emotions of what was going on in his life. So it was really kind of interesting. It was uh different than some dealing with a young person this was somebody that was having some stress in their life and so on and the remedy worked within a day and he felt amazing but then he went back to all of his old habits and a uh, week 10 days later he got back in touch with me and he said i'm suffering again and it's worse this time and uh, I said, okay, well, what's going on? What's changed? And he said, well, you know, I went back and I was doing this and this and this and this, and it wasn't fully healed yet. And I said, okay, all right, we need to look at this a little differently. And uh, the abscess was quite large and it was very painful and it was very hot and it was very angry and there was a lot going on. So I incorporated herbs in with the remedy and the relief that he got. And, and again, I got that phone call of, I can't believe how much is draining out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out it was, it was silica was what the end result was. Um, the oh, that was remedy. a very gorgeous boy, by the way. Yeah, but boy before when he was sick <laughs> and he spiked a fever and you know hadn't been taking care of himself he looked terrible but after wow what a transformation what a transformation and so uh just a couple of weeks ago two three weeks ago I think it was just before you came actually um he reached out to me and said okay now my other tooth is doing the thing and it turns out that he was stressed about uh a new job about moving across the country, you know, big, big changes coming. So we went back to the original remedy, um, which interestingly enough was kelp carb and uh, work like a charm. You know, he, he started the herbs. He started to support his immune system. Again, he had fallen back into some of his old habits and he was like, you know, I'm really seeing where these things aren't serving me. And I was like, great. That's a, that's a good, good observation. And uh, yeah, within a few days, it was resolved. So, and if anybody's ever had a tooth abscess, boy, do they know how painful they can be. So we really want to thank everybody. Um, we're sorry about taking our hiatus, but uh, we're back and we're excited to be sharing information with you again. And we're grateful for all of the support and for the new people that are joining the group all the time and sharing it with um with their friends and other animal owners. And if you need us for anything, if you have an acute, uh, if you have a chronic, we're here. This is a great way to contact us. So you can reach us through uh, Facebook. You can reach us through these numbers, through our email. And uh, we also have uh, our calendar online through Linktree. 
if you have something urgent, no matter what time of day it is, reach out because Alex and I are about five hours apart and there is very little windows <laughs> during the day where one of us isn't available to connect with you. And uh, we're super grateful to have everybody. Ah, and the most important thing you yes. forgot. What did I forget? About our YouTube. Oh, yes. Yes, we actually oh, are putting, we're, I know. <laughs> Self-promotion, not one of my best things. Um, we have created a YouTube channel and I will be sharing that. And these videos will be posted on the YouTube channel going forward so that uh, it was actually one of our um, members on this group that kind of clued us in. You can download videos and watch them when you don't have internet. And she happens to be kind of off the grid. So um, so we're excited to be able to share those. And I'll have to follow up with her and let her know that she can find our stuff. So you'll find us on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we have our Homeopathy United Facebook page, as well as the Farm Animal page and Skin Condition page. And, uh, and now you'll be able to find us on Instagram and YouTube as well. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dr. Alex. Bye-bye. Lovely to be here.